For 40 years, scientists believed the edge of our solar system would be a silent, cold frontier. But that illusion shattered when Voyager detected a wall of fire, searing plasma at nearly 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit, far beyond any limit we imagined. How could something man-made survive an inferno at the solar boundary where no probe had ever returned data? Voyager's discovery doesn't just challenge decades of theory, it forces us to redraw the very line between our home and the deep galaxy beyond. And what Voyager found waiting out there stunned everyone. At a distance of 121 astronomical units from the Sun, far beyond Pluto's orbit, Voyager's plasma wave instrument registered a sudden spike. The data revealed a region where temperatures soared to between 30,000 and 50,000 Kelvin, reaching nearly 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This was not a gentle fade into darkness, but a jolt of energy at the very frontier of the solar system. The numbers didn't match any prediction. For decades, models suggested the sun's influence would taper off gradually, that the boundary would be cold and uneventful. Instead, Voyager had found a seething layer of superheated plasma, a turbulent compression zone where the solar wind crashed into the interstellar medium. The readings came as a shock. Such temperatures, in theory, should have incinerated any spacecraft. Yet Voyager pressed on, its 1970s insulation and radiative cooling quietly doing their job in the near-perfect vacuum. The paradox was clear, blistering heat, but almost no matter to transfer it. Out here, temperature meant the speed of particles, not the threat of burning. As the flight team watched the data stream in, what had seemed a distant, abstract boundary became real. A wall of fire, confirmed by the faint hum of plasma waves echoing from the galaxy beyond. Voyager, alone in the void, had become the first witness to the true edge of the sun's domain. Long before Voyager crossed into interstellar space, the edge of the solar system was a place of speculation and rough sketches. Early heliophysicists pictured the sun's domain as a simple smooth bubble, its boundary a distant cold horizon where solar wind faded quietly into the galaxy. The pioneer, 10 and 11 missions in the 1970s, nudged at this mystery sending back hints of turbulence and strange particle readings as they ventured outward. But their instruments, limited by the technology and power of the era, could not resolve what lay beyond. The data was patchy, the signals ambiguous, and as Pioneer's transmitters weakened, the final approach to the boundary slipped from view. With only these fragments, scientists turned to computer simulations and theoretical models. Most predicted a gentle transition. The solar wind would slow, cool, and thin, merging seamlessly with interstellar space. The prevailing maps showed a comet-shaped heliosphere, trailing a long tail behind the sun. Yet these models rested on guesswork, built from indirect measurements and assumptions about distant plasma. No probe had ever crossed the true threshold. The result was a knowledge gap, an entire frontier defined more by imagination than by evidence. When Voyager's instruments finally delivered direct readings, the sheer violence and complexity of the boundary defied every expectation. The old models, once considered reliable, now looked naive in the face of the data streaming back from the edge. The journey to the true edge of the sun's domain unfolds in stages, each one stranger than the last. The first waypoint is the termination shock, an invisible frontier where the solar wind, racing outward at supersonic speed, suddenly slows and heats as it collides with the thin gas drifting between the stars. Here, Voyager's instruments record a sharp drop in speed and a rise in temperature, but the spacecraft presses on, deeper into a region called the Helios Heath. This is not a quiet buffer, but a swirling, turbulent sea of charged particles. The plasma here is restless, shaped by solar storms and the long cycles of the sun's activity. Even at these distances, the sun's moods ripple outward, pushing and pulling the very edge of its influence. Beyond the heliosheath lies the most mysterious boundary of all, the heliopause. It's not a fixed wall, but a breathing, shifting frontier. Voyager 1 crossed this boundary in August 2012, at a distance of about 121 astronomical units from the Sun. Six years later, Voyager 2 followed, but at a different distance, proving that the heliopause moves in and out, responding to the Sun's changing winds. As each spacecraft approached, their detectors picked up a faint, persistent hum, a plasma wave, vibrating at just the right frequency to signal the presence of interstellar gas. This was the sound of the galaxy itself, seeping through the sun's last defenses. Mission controllers back on Earth watched the data with a mix of awe and disbelief. 
realizing that the spacecraft were not just crossing a line on a map, but entering a new cosmic environment, one where the rules are still being written. A spacecraft passing through an environment measured at 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit should have been vaporized in an instant, but the numbers from Voyager told a different story, a paradox at the heart of deep space physics. Out here, temperature means the speed of particles, not the sensation of heat. The plasma at the heliopause is so rarefied that even at blistering speeds, there are simply too few particles to transfer energy to the spacecraft. In practical terms, the density is lower than the best laboratory vacuums on Earth, less than a hundredth of a particle per cubic centimeter. The result is a region that is, by any earthly standard, both impossibly hot and impossibly empty. Voyager's survival was not a matter of luck. The probe's multi-layer insulation, designed in the 1970s to shield against the cold of deep space, turned out to be the perfect defense against the strange hazards of the heliopause. Each layer, thinner than a sheet of paper, worked together to reflect stray radiation and slow the loss of heat from the instruments inside. Radiative cooling, a passive process that lets heat escape into the void, kept critical systems stable even as the spacecraft passed through the plasma wall. No spike in temperature ever registered on Voyager's sensors. The internal thermistors, the external radiators, all showed business as usual. The flight team's engineering notebooks from that period record nothing more dramatic than routine power checks and system diagnostics. In the end, the so-called wall of fire was revealed as a triumph not just of physics, but of careful forward-thinking design. The same craft that once skimmed the clouds of Jupiter now slipped through a furnace at the edge of the sun's domain, unscathed, still listening for the faintest signals from the galaxy beyond. Each pulse from Voyager is more than a technical achievement, it's a live update from the edge of the sun's reach. The spacecraft's instruments are still capturing how cosmic rays surge and fade, how magnetic fields twist and reconnect, and how the sun's shield filters out some of the galaxy's most energetic particles. These data points aren't just numbers, they are our only window into the invisible border between our solar system and the wider galaxy. Every hour, Voyager's radio signal brings home new evidence of how cosmic rays slip through the sun's defenses, and how the magnetic field lines stretch and tangle as solar and interstellar forces collide. This stream of information challenges old assumptions and sparks new questions about the shape of the heliosphere, the true power of the sun, and the nature of the space between stars. As long as Voyager's faint signal endures, the story of our place in the cosmos keeps unfolding, one discovery at a time. In 1977, two small spacecraft left Earth on what was meant to be a five-year tour of the outer planets. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 carried gold records, simple computers, and the hopes of a generation that dared to ask how far human curiosity could reach. No one expected them to last decades, let alone cross the final boundary of the sun's domain. Yet nearly half a century later, both probes are still alive, still sending signals across the darkness, now more than 20 billion kilometers from home. Their journey has outlived presidents, outpaced predictions, and redefined the scale of what a single mission can achieve. Voyager is not just a machine, it is a message in motion, proof that a handful of tools built in the analog age can outlast the boundaries of their creators. Each faint transmission is a reminder that humanity's reach extends beyond the warmth of the sun into a realm where no living thing has ever traveled. The edge Voyager crossed is more than a line in space. It is a threshold for our species, a first step into the true ocean of the galaxy. And as long as the signal continues, the story of our journey outward is still being written. In 2012, Voyager 1 crossed the heliopause at 121 astronomical units, registering electron temperatures of up to 50,000 Kelvin, nearly 90,000 degrees Fahrenheit. These findings, recorded by Voyager's plasma wave subsystem and confirmed in NASA's technical bulletins, overturned decades of models that pictured the solar system's edge as cold and quiet. Instead, scientists now know that the boundary is a turbulent zone shaped by both solar and interstellar forces. Yet, despite detailed measurements, the full dynamics of this wall of fire including its variability and precise structure, remain under study. Some data on the interstellar environment, especially long-term magnetic field behavior, are still being analyzed. Today, both Voyager probes continue to send back data, showing that the Sun's influence stretches farther than once believed. 
The detection of the heliopause's heat and plasma has redrawn the map of our solar system, marking a new chapter in our understanding of space.